Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Cripple Creek was originally founded up here in Poverty Gulch by Bob Womack in 1890. He was up here looking for any type of gold for 15 years. Could you imagine that? And then eventually right over there, he found some. He actually saw an outcropping and he dug down 48 Feet. And that's when he hit a fabulously rich gold vein. Oh, it was so rich. And so he incorporated this mine here, the Gold King Mine. It's the king, baby! He erected the, the head frame and the, the sortation house. They eventually sunk this shaft down a thousand feet and they found incredible amounts of gold. Other miners heard about the fabulously rich strike and they came here and they sunk holes everywhere. I mean, they're just literally holes everywhere. And all through this valley, head frames are popping up left and right. And then eventually right down the way is when Cripple Creek was born. It was the settlement to supply the miners that worked up here in Poverty Gulch. Now, don't get me wrong. There was a bunch of mines here that didn't get anything. Oh, and they got plenty mad too over it. That's why they call it Poverty Gulch. And I'll get you over there and give you a close up view of the ore sortation house and how that works. That is the model that they use for all the mines in the Cripple Creek Victor area and Goldfield too. If you look across the way, you can see an open and stoke. That's the original workings from Bob Womack. On the 700 foot level, you can get into the Molly Kathleen mine, which is up on the hill. They connect through a series of cross cuts and air shafts, but eventually they do connect, and that's where they get a lot of the ventilation for the Molly Kathleen is inside the Gold King mine. Now, the Molly Kathleen mine up on the hill is still open. You can take tours in that thing. Matter of fact, we made a video about it, and I'll leave a link down in the description so you can see that video. So if you ever come to Cripple Creek, Get up to the Molly Kathleen mine and take a tour. It takes you down to the thousand foot level. I guarantee it's worth it. And you'll see the connection point from that mine to that mine. Now, a lot of the head frames that were here have been relocated because Newmont came in and they mined a lot of this stuff. But Newmont didn't want to destroy history. So what did they do? That's right. They erected this stuff in remote locations and that way you can go see them yourself. They could have easily destroyed them and reclaimed the land, but no, they actually rebuilt a lot of the head frames so that you can see them. So when you come out to Cripple Creek, you come out here and you'll see nothing but head frames. Now I'm gonna get you down over here to the sortation house or classification house as I call it. And I'm gonna explain how that works because that's a unique process to this area. These big structures here are all over Cripple Creek and Victor and Goldfield. What that thing is, is that's an ore sortation or classification house. And the reason why they have those things is because the geology here is a hydrothermal brecciated zone. And all that means is you have a lot of groundwater that came in contact with a lot of these magma chambers and they flash pointed into steam. And when that happened, they erupted violently. And that's referred to as a Friedel magmatic explosion. It's not a typical explosion that you're used to seeing from buildup of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide in a lot of these volcanic vents. No, this is when groundwater comes in contact with magma chambers and they flash over to steam causing a huge eruption. It's the same thing that happened over at Yellowstone National Park a couple weeks ago. When you have those types of hydrothermal explosions, it brecciates the rock, fractures it. And what that does is it creates perfect conduit for hydrothermal fluid fluids in the next generation to come up through. Think of this mountain like a giant ball of granite with a sponge on the inside. Those hydrothermal fluids are going to easily move through that softer rock. Well, what does that have to do with that, you're saying, Jeff? Well, it's really simple. A lot of your hydrothermal deposition gold deposits have a lot of the gold in the infill in the fine grain matrix that cements the broken rock back together. And you'll see that in a lot of hydrothermal systems. It's that fine grain matrix that's re-cementing all that fragmented or brecciated rock from the first explosions back together. And that's what the old timers were looking for. How this comes into play is, is after they mine the ore out, the harder pieces never had gold in them. It was the fine grain matrix that was cementing it all together that had the gold. So they would crush it up. And of course the rock would crush and fracture easy along those planes where it was re-cemented together. A lot of the finer material would drop out and they'd run it through a series of screens. So you had the fine material, which was high grade. You had middlings, which is the somewhat broken material and then you had the really hard broken rock that didn't have any gold in it and that was usually carted off to the mine dump. So you had a lot of these buildings that acted as giant screen or classification centers to get to that fine grain matrix that was cementing the brecciated rock together because that's where the highest content of gold was. So that's why you see these everywhere. And look at that, there's a little deer over there. And then they just back rail cars up into there and load them up. Now when word got out that there was a fabulously rich strike over here on the west side of Pikes Peak, people 
were flocking here by the thousands and they were poking and prodding into the ground. And like I told you earlier, they were setting up shafts and head frames everywhere. And this is one of them. This is the COD mine. I know it sounds funny, huh? Well, there's a funny story behind that. The two brothers who basically made this mine, one of the brothers said, look, I'm not gonna invest money in an area out there. It's probably already claimed up. And the other brother said, no, I'm telling you, there's one little piece of land left, but they want $10,000 for it. Yeah, I'm not giving you 10 grand for that. Get on back home. I'll give you $150 for your train ride. So the brother asked a friend, I, I gotta have some money to get this claim. I have a feeling that there's a lot of gold here. And the guy said, well, I'll give you the money uh, on a COD, cash on demand, which means that once he gives him the money, he better give him some gold for it too. So one of the brothers got the money and he bought the property, even though his brother was upset and mad. So they dropped a shaft right here, right across from Bob Womack's shaft. And what happened? They hit a rich vein of gold too. They dropped this thing down 800 feet and they were pulling out gold like nobody's business. But then they soon realized that there was more money in milling the ore than trying to mine it because they weren't gold miners. They didn't know anything about that. So what they do, they lease this thing out and then they went in and they bought a whole bunch of land. They built the Portland Mill. And from that, they had exclusive rights on milling people's gold ore. That's genius. So they made money hand over fist because once you get the gold ore out of the ground, you got to mill it to get the gold out. This thing is in perfect condition. And the only reason it's in perfect condition is because the mine on the hill behind us, which is owned by Newmont, went to great lengths to restore it. So let's go check it out. It's a two compartment shaft. This is the manway here. And you got ladder platforms to go all the way up to the shiv wheel. They were running a skip. They weren't hauling up mine cars on a cage. They used an actual skip. And the reason why is because these are so much more efficient and faster at getting the ore out. You just dump the ore in from an ore chute, ring the bell, it goes up. As it goes up, those two front wheels catch on those guides. You see the guides up there at the top? What it does is it rocks this entire skip forward to the front and dumps automatically. They refer to that system up there as a Kimberly. So the skip comes up, automatically dumps, goes back down. You don't need anybody up here. You can get ore out so much faster. And a lot of the mines adopted this system. In fact, all around the Southwest, this is all they would use because they realize this is so much more faster and efficient at getting large quantities of ore out of the mine. Once the skip came up and dumped, it would dump into this chute and they had a gate right here. The reason why this is tapered in like that, because if you left it this wide, all that material would flow over the top of the mine car. You'd have a mine car sitting here waiting and it would be one guy's job to fill it up because this chute's not gonna hold that much material. So he would open it up. There'd be a big handle here, crank, 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 crank. He'd have his mine car car here and then he would push it out. Now they would have to tell him, is it waste rock or is it ore? They would have to let him know. So his job would be to either go out to that ore bin or go out to the mine dump. Like in our mine, they have a kick switch. That one would go out to the ore bin and that's this one would go out to the mine dump. He just dump it and then go back. And that was his job. But if it was full of ore, he would push it out here. Now there would be a trestle here that connected all the way across to that ore bin. Then you dump that monker and you go back and you wait for that skip to come up again. And of course the whole thing is worked by the hoist house right over here. You can always tell a hoist house because they got a little window or a triangle piece sticking up for the steel rope that goes up to the shiv wheel. And this is the hoist house. Isn't this cool? Now what's different about this is they had electric motor here that was chain drive here. See that? And this is referred to as a friction drive hoist because they had these two rubber pads here that would run on the outside of this drum. You see that? And they usually use them for smaller mines. Even though the handles are bent, you get an idea. This operates the brake band. You can see part of the brake band down there. And this, this is the clutch. This is what would engage and disengage. See that? Isn't that cool? So he, his job would be to look out that window. And remember I told you about that funky window? Well, he had to see when the skip came up so he could slow down. Cause if not, he would overwind and it would take it all the way to the top and it would just destroy everything. So he had to have a full view of what he's looking at because when that skip came up through the shaft, ease it up that Kimberly dump, put the brake on, make sure that it's dumping. Then he would disengage the clutch 
back down the shaft. Nice and easy, had to be careful with that because you don't want that skip to get away from you. Now what this lever does is it's connected here to this crossbar. And this crossbar is connected to this piece. What that would do is it would shift the angle of the axle that this drum is sitting on. And by doing so, it would move it away from this friction drive here. So in essence, it would act like a clutch, a friction clutch. So that's why he got paid four bucks a day. And this is where the compressor sat right here. And look at this view. You can see the Gold King across the way. And that's Poverty Gulch. And this is the original shaft. This thing goes down 800 feet. And you can see another ore sortation house or classification house as I call it up there on the hill. And of course you can see the Newmont pit up there too. Oh, you imagine dropping this shaft. There's got to be other ways into this thing because there's just so many mines around here. So we're going to look around because I have a feeling there is and if I can find it, I'll take you in there. But I ain't going to do anything until you smash that like button. Smash it hard! And don't forget at the end of each month, we give away a brand new Gold Monster 1000 metal detector and bags and bags of painter from our gold mine and each one comes with a silver bar. If you want to get involved with that, just look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks something like that. Go ahead and click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you're in like Flynn. And if you want to see more videos about this area, go ahead and click on that video, and I'll see you on the next video.